I am almost done with my hike from Unicoi Gap over to Dix Creek, and I have had a lot of firsts. First slack pack trip, first time taking a shuttle, first time getting caught in a thunderstorm while ridge hiking. It is absolutely time for another episode of Spark Notes. Let's start. Ah. Let's start with the slack packing. For those of you that might not know, slack packing is just packing without your full weight. So no tents, a whole lot less gear, just a, a small book bag style backpack, a uh, lot less weight, and in theory, way more miles. But what did I learn? First off, it's a lot more complicated than it sounds. You have to get to where you're going and get home in the same day. So while slack packing has a lot less weight involved, you don't have to carry so much on your back. No sleeping gear, no uh, no tent, a lot less cookware. You do have to drive in and out in the same day. Ooh, that was a weird hiccup. So that meant for today on our itinerary, we had 17 miles on the trail. Not that bad with not a lot of weight, but we also had six hours in the car. So when you stack those things together, six hours and 17 miles, it ends up to be a pretty long day. The reason we're slack packing this stretch is because I live close enough to the southern terminus of the Appalachian Trail that I figured we could drive up, put in a, uh, a good parking to parking lot uh, section and then get back in a weekend without having to do all the planning that is involved with any kind of overnight hike. Um, what else? Oh, shuttles. I got to take a shuttle. I'm here on the trail with Doc FM and rather than take two cars here, we drove one car left it at the end of our hike at Dix Creek and then had a shuttle uh, service come pick us up and drive us to the front of our hike. Um, super effective way of doing things. It cost us 30 bucks for a 20 minute ride, which was well worth not driving a car the, uh, the six hours extra that a second car would have had to go. We got a, a phone number out of the AWOL guide. I actually called a number out of a paper book, if you can believe that. Uh, people still do that, crazy, I know. And it worked out great, so shuttles, fun stuff, would do again. Let's talk about hiking in a thunderstorm. Uh, so first off, I did not plan to hike in a thunderstorm. We knew it might rain, we knew it could storm and we did prepare for the worst. So we had our rain jackets, which I'm not wearing now because it was dry until I started recording this, of course. And we also had rain pants. Can't touch this, all of that gets really, really sweaty under there, but it beats getting drenched in a downpour. So I'm glad that we had the proper gear. I also brought a rain cover for my backpack. I know a lot of people aren't a big fan of those, but personally, it was nice having my whole pack dry. It worked out really well for me. Once we heard the thunder, <laughs> as I said, <laughs> we decided to take shelter as much as possible. And we did that by getting into a gap. We were a long way away from an actual shelter, but we stayed off the ridges and got down the gap and waited for the storm to pass. And that was super helpful. Really fun, had a good time. Spark, yep. Spooky dookie.